Hello. Good afternoon, evening, morning. Good afternoon, evening, morning. Whatever it is for you, wherever you are in the world. Happy almost Easter uh, and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Friday Bean. Normally, the episode before Easter, we call the Jelly Bean and we have Jelly Bean graphics and it's magical. And there and there's all these Easter things and, and we it's so exciting. And I forgot. We forgot. We forgot this year. So Jelly Bean is canceled. You you guys are still drinking your your delicious coffee this week. No jelly beans for you. I'm putting you on um, the camera more because you're pretty. Oh, okay. Yay. I'm pretty. Um, so today we are gonna be looking at some of the very first little essences, little little whiffs of summer trends that we have, you know, seen over the last few weeks. Now, keep in mind that Things can change. There's still going to be other trends that pop up. Um, we also need E-Rank Up. I forgot about that. Thanks. Um, sorry. <laughs> so this is just kind of our initial forecasting. If you've never been here for one of our trend videos, um, this is going to show you how you can kind of explore trends on your own using both E-Rank. And my favorite to sniff out trends is target.com. Now, the cool thing about Target is even if you live somewhere like the UK where you don't have Target, Target stays on top of all of the trends. I feel like they create the trends. They just know what's always trending. Um, so I always head to Target to find things like trending color palettes, um, what we could, you know, start predicting in patterns and things. If you do anything related to fabrics or stationery or, I mean, really patterns can be applied to a lot of different products. Um, you can look at things like what's being printed on the clothing or uh, pillows, for example, over at Target. And a lot of times that stuff will translate other or over to other areas as well. Um, if you do print on demand, you know, if you do jewelry, you can start looking at the colors that people are looking for. There's so much. So no matter what you sell, hopefully you can find some Something in here today that will be useful to you. Um, are... Sorry to ask, what camera do you use? I just got the funds to buy one. Uh, we actually use a DSLR camera. We use a Sony yeah. A7 III. You'll also need an adapter from Elgato if you would like to use it as something like a webcam. Yes, yes. It was um, probably it's probably the most expensive thing that we've like invested in, but. Thanks to you guys, you guys make that possible through watching, you know, when an ad pops up, we get paid for those. So YouTube pays us and we always put that money back into yep. the YouTube channel for things like um, our awesome lights that you can't see, but that the lights in the background, the lights in the background, the well, background we're saving up to replace. Yeah, yeah. We've got a new background coming very soon. Uh, the cat tower, something that you guys requested so that you could watch bubbers back there. Which he's next to me right now on a stool. Oh, well, he's sometimes he uses it. <laughs> sometimes um, he uses it. But guys, we are going to be starting off probably with Target. That's my favorite place to find trends. Um, We're only four minutes in, so not even half of our viewers are here yet. Oh, well, before, it normally takes about 15 minutes. Well, I'm not starting after 15. We'll we'll move it along. However, um, I did want to quickly point out to you guys <laughs> that I had a great video on Tuesday about ways that you could potentially use chat GPT um, to, you know, kind of help with some of the tasks you already do in your Etsy shop. I know we've had a lot of people who have said, you know, eh, I don't really want to use it. And that's fine. Um, in this video, I was kind of trying to take an unbiased approach as someone who was extremely biased starting out uh, because I didn't like the idea of it. But I was really trying to test my own biases and try to find good use cases for it for people who might not be creative writers, people who, you know, maybe English isn't your, your first language and you want to try to polish up things like your descriptions. Um, it, it's a really great resource if you need that extra help. It's almost like having a little assistant, you know, sitting beside you there to help you out. So definitely check that out. Um, and then I've got another video coming out this Tuesday for newbies about some uh, newbie mistakes to avoid. I, I try to do one of those every year with anything extra that I've, you know, figured out along our Etsy journey. So that'll just kind of be an updated newbie video for you guys to check out. Um, all right, I think that we're probably good. Now, the first website, like I said, we're gonna check out is Target. And let me tell you, going to their website, it's a lot easier than trying to look for trends by going in store. Um, I go to Target almost every week. I like to go there to get like little grocery items and things. And 
I, I, I'm just not really able to, I mean, sometimes I can identify some trends, but the way that their website is laid out, they actually have a section specifically for trends. Now, as we dive into these trends, if this is your first time watching one of these, make sure that you're not just looking at the products because often it's not the products themselves. It's the backgrounds. It is the colors that they use. It's the yes. little props. It's some of the words that they use. It's some of the overarching themes. So don't just focus on the products because a lot of times it'll be like, supplements and things like that don't just look at those things mm -mm. look at the background colors when we get into there's a whole section for um you know target shoppers to take per pictures of their purchases in their homes you can see what they bought but start looking around these super trendy people's houses look in the background look at their walls look at look at the decor look at what they're <laughs> wearing there's so much that can be learned and it's like a little window into potentially your target customers houses um it, it's a really cool way to explore so i'm good if you are oh oh it's oh, very, it's so all bright it's all easter colors so it's like let me make sure my hdr is off so it doesn't look like absolute <laughs> doo-doo butts to them did you guys see hey. that did you see how it was like Whoa! watch oh oh, <laughs> oh my monitor's so bright okay all right Screecher. It's all yellow. And it's all yellow. Happy. We need to make sure we are zoomed in enough for people to see things. Okay. Yeah. All right. So when you get to target.com, oh, you'll need to zoom it out. I got, I can't find, there you go. What you want to do is go into what's new and you're going to go into target finds. You can also just type in target.com slash finds. Um, oh, look, they've got a new one. So from here, what you can do is look at these um, little areas that they have created they almost put together their own little collections but again don't just look at what's for sale in these collections right look at the colors look at look at the overarching trends so we'll go ahead and pop this one open because it wasn't here yesterday do you want to move him onto his cat tree yeah okay. he's just already destructive all right so first thing I recommend reading these headlines, okay? The countdown to summer sports has begun, or has begun. So obviously you can't do anything with licensed sports teams, um, no college teams, none of that. But you could still do, you know, basic themes, like general, you know, like ball, sports ball. Sports was, ball. Sports ball. Sports, generic sports ball team here. Goal. <laughs> Let me see this real quick. What? I just want to move this to make sure. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh no! They can see it. Oh no! Okay, well I guess I don't get to see the. You've shattered the fine. grand illusion. That way. Okay, there we go. So, um, wow, Target, great photo there. Fantastic quality. Fantastic cutout. There, yeah, Target. <laughs> so I'm seeing lots of red and white here. That might be a notable color palette. Um, I think that they were kind of going with a baseball stitch theme here. I'm seeing lots of navy. Um, I do like this overall theme, though, this whole sports theme. So it might be something to note. Um, not... well, they went hard on the sports this year, huh? Yeah, this is just one collection, though. Um, so not a whole lot. Maybe it's just because I'm not a sports person. Not a whole lot that I'm actually gleaning from this collection. But that's OK. They just added it today. Let's jump into yeah, you gotta some... be careful with sports stuff because copyright. Right. So. All right. This one was added today, though. Denim. So mix and match shades of blue. Get creative with new silhouettes and add daring denim accessories to make this trend your own. So that's something interesting. Denim. Um, I can definitely see a couple different industries and it's not just denim itself. Look at the color. They've got the the sunglasses. They've got nail polish. We actually have a couple alphas who make nail polish. Mm -hmm. um, they've kind of done like the patchwork denim. Lots of blues. Uh, the makeup. So definitely start looking at some of these colors. And it, it seems to be all different shades of blue. Very 90s. The hair clips. Um, and that kind of monochrome theme, big, huge hair clips. Mm -hmm. So lots of interesting things here. I, no I, jorts, though, and I'm pretty upset by that. Oh, no jorts? Oh, well, there's, there's girls, but that's not dude jorts. I, yeah. want, I want jort jorts. 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 Is the, the, no. That is a man leg. I don't think so. I'm that, sure that's a woman's knee. What do you guys think? Is that a, is that a, is, what kind of knee is that? I guess there's. 
I guess there's no real way to tell, huh? No, I guess there's no real way to tell. <laughs> okay, so... Is, is it rude to profile someone by their knees? I don't think so. M maybe. All right, let's go ahead and pop in to this one, which is more spring, but a lot of these trends are going to carry through until summer. And keep mm -hmm. in mind, if you're still marketing spring products, start stealing some of these colors for your backgrounds. Now, one thing that I'll notice is they did use this nice, let's see, green and pink and a pop of orange are the go-to colors. They're, they're going for Easter for this. Yeah. This is, this is Easter colors. But things that you can also notice are monochrome outfits. So that's something that we We've been seeing since Christmas time is monochrome <laughs> outfits. If you create any type of products, you know, it we're seeing less graphic t-shirts and things like that, and more um, you know, like more plain kind of basics and bold colors. This one might be interesting for those of you who make things like polymer clay earrings. Mm -hmm. You can make some big, crazy, like 80s, 90s earrings that could go with some of these kind of monochrome outfits when sugar said kiwi vibe yeah i got that of, yeah it's a very like other than this outfit here it didn't really fit into the mix but not it's, at all it's kind of like a big fresh fruit bowl of all the different colors so mm -hmm. i think that these are some good noteworthy uh still relatively plain nothing super crazy other than the one girl's super zebra -y. Yeah. yeah it wasn't zebra -y. tropical okay so this is good, um, not just for food, but start thinking about those of you who make candle scents and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, let's see. Cocoa coffee. Coconut bites. What the heck are bevies? Beverages. Oh, be <laughs> bevies. <laughs> I've never heard bev bevies. Let's that's go. A that's get a valley girl term. For let's sure. go get some bevies. <laughs> um, so we've got kind of some pina colada type flavors that would make a good candle coconut now look at the background here as well if you make like candle skin care maybe this might be a fun way to showcase some products right look at how they stage them dude i'm all about the coconut pineapple trend they can keep that up yeah curry curry that's fun these are these are fun pictures if you do um i know we've got a couple outfits <clears throat> who make engraved cutting boards maybe some fresh tomatoes and some basil and things like that laying on your your cutting board for your photos might be fun all right you said it goes with the rest of the clueless style i got you i know what you're talking about let's go into let's see so these are more eco-friendly swaps but this might be fun i know a couple of you guys make um like washable paper towels and washable makeup wipes and things like that um wool felted dryer balls i i know that there are quite a few of you who do things like that so look at this keyword thoughtful swaps that might be something really fun that you could use in your marketing cool practical ways to live with the planet in mind these are really, really great marketing buzz terms. And I love how they've incorporated the clouds into their backgrounds. Um, we're seeing lots of blues, some some wood tones. Let's see. I love their, their overall color palettes. Lots of blues and beiges. They're going for those snatchy, reusable. Yeah. Recycled. Bees. Bees are always a common theme uh, with like beeswax. Biodegradable cooler instead of a foam cooler. Yeah. So this is fun. And you guys can also incorporate things like your packaging if you want to, you know, you have to spend a little bit extra. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it can pay off because someone, you know, who purchases your products and being more eco-conscious is something that's important <clears throat> to them. They're more likely to come back to buy from you again and again. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not necessarily just about a product being more expensive. Like we, uh, we had a discussion about this yesterday about whole foods, like the bottled water that they have, you know, one, right. of, the, one of the bottles of water they have, one of the one liter bottles is from a company. It's like three something dollars for a liter of water. That's a lot of money for water, but it's also a company that uses recycled plastics, geothermal power and they single source their water so they're minimizing their impact that's what you're paying the extra for exactly. because they have to spend an astronomical amount of money to acquire it so festival <clears throat> season this is a big one um over on the e-rank social media i don't know if you guys know that i run the instagram over there but that was one of the things that i highlighted i think last week was festival season um 
there are so many ways that you can cater to the festival people, whether that be music festivals, uh, vendors events, um, you know, farmers markets and things like that. I'm noticing that big like Hawaiian shirts for men are super trendy right now. I'm seeing those everywhere. Boogaloo. We're seeing the the denim is back. Um, the what's the bandana paisley? material mm -hmm. is very popular really big crazy sunglasses and earrings are also super duper popular um and and the butterfly hair clips from the 90s are super duper popular so i think that there's a lot of fun that can be had even if you're just like you know making jewelry stick in a little butterfly hair clip for your photos for your marketing lots of really really bold colors here we've mm -hmm. got yellow and purple together it just feels green. like it just feels like the 90s yeah those butterfly clips really solidify the deal it's like every girl i dated in middle school <laughs> i i definitely had some butterfly clips uh -huh. when i was little um crocheted and knit tops are are very very popular right now i know that a couple of you make um like very very thinly woven tops so you know things that you could toss on over your bikini for the beach stay comfy that's yeah. festival season um big platform shoes and keep in mind you could make you could make something funny like a greeting card that has like the bucket hat and the big platform shoes and the little hair clips and you know maybe it says like the 90s called they want their 90s birthday back you know, just mm -hmm. silly silliness for 90s birthday kids. You know, there's so much fun that you could have. Um, I am noticing that strawberry prints are really popular this year. It's like every year a different fruit gets popular. Lemons are big right now. Last year I saw a lot of blueberry prints and I'm still seeing lots of lemons, but strawberries I'm starting to Fruit, notice. Yeah. Um, and big floral patterns. Um, these little fun bracelets. Yeah. <laughs> Those are, uh, you can buy them already made. And mm -hmm. I look at it and I'm like, I, my daughter has all the beads to make these. So people are buying them clearly because Target is selling them. Um, There's the little metal butterfly clips. Yep. Little, yep. little metal butterfly Lots clips. Lots of pastel shades. It's just nineties. That's what it was. Yeah. Look at these colors here. People is... yearned for the seventies, but recreated it terribly. And then we ended up with the nineties. <laughs> <clears throat> the checkerboard patterns. That's another one that I've been seeing a lot of. Lots and lots of checkerboard patterns in, mm -hmm. in every color. Um, looks like another little... Woven top. Yeah, a little woven crochet. It's not quite crochet. It looks knit. A little top. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Yeah. I said very Y2K. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it feels like. And it feels very like the 80s kids dressing like the 90s, not quite the 90s. Y2K uh, was actually a really, really great keyword a couple months ago. It probably still is um, if you check over on E-Rank. So if you can incorporate in Y2K. April finds that double down on playful, earthy vibes. So looks like we're going to see more outdoorsy stuff. There's that checkerboard, very... Uh, this color right here is like 70s to me because it was mm -hmm. the color of my grandma's living room. It was just like this really weird orangey peach color. I see stuff like that. And it just makes me sweat. I'm like, oh, God, that's so hot. Like a sauna suit. Yeah. Um. See, look, there's that color again. There's that color again. Look at the green. Green, green, green. There's that color again. It's all pastels. It's, Green, it's, it's back to pastels. It's been like it's been like six years now of pastel. They're, they're People not, love it. These aren't quite pastel. They're more of like earthy. Like this is kind of a yeah, pastel, but I these. Guess, but they're they're muted tones. Yeah, like even in the Easter banner, there's that orange and there's that green again. Look, mm -hmm. there's that orange. There's that green again. There's that green again. Adult coloring. Um, I, I've been seeing a lot of that coming back. It was big a couple years ago, then it kind of died out for like a year or so. No, now they're big right now, now. Now it's coming back again. Um, let's see. This is another thing. Like these patterns, they're a little bit more detailed. Again, something that my grandma would have had in her kitchen, like a big like tapestry with all these very bold colored fruits um go back and watch that 70s show and look how red and kitty's kitchen is decorated that's and kind of how things are right now it's what's in yeah yeah it's it feels very much like that um i was actually disappointed in that 90s show because their kitchen did not feel as 90s as i feel like uh -uh. it could have. 
No, it felt like in someone who was an adult in the 70s that wanted to keep Te- their kitchen looking like the 70s. Yeah. But couldn't because things looked like the 90s. That's what it looked like. I think they did a good job. Let's see. There's, again, some of these colors that we're seeing. Now, this is a big one. Textures. We've been talking about textures for about a year. Different textures, wicker, um, bamboo, textured pillows, textured rugs, um, all, all different textured items. This might be fun for those of you who crochet. If you can try to attach pom-poms to things, people love pom-poms and tassels. Tassel jewelry is really popular. Tassel, uh, maybe purse charms, little keychains, things that they could accessorize their purses with. There's a lot of ways that you could incorporate in some of these trends. Wall art that kind of matches this aesthetic. If someone had, you know, this vibe going on, you could create some something for them. And obviously garden stakes and things like that are going to become increasingly popular over the next few months. Top 10 most shared finds. So these are viral finds. Um, Okay. So we're talking about, you know, what, what we're seeing as the product, but don't just look at the product. Look at the color crystal sleeve. Is that a type of sleeve. Oh, yeah, because yeah, they're bunchy. It's, it's, yeah, it's bunched and layered over itself. So, but look at the color. We've got these fluorescents, and Target knew that, so they made sure to incorporate this color. And then we also have this kind of sea foam color mm-hmm. reflecting in. We're still pushing back into the, the greens and blues, the muteds. Mm-hmm. Bright, crazy, vibrant colors. We've got this bright blue, this bright mm-hmm. yellow. Um, Now we're kind of popping into the pink, but look at her house. She's got a nice muted shade house. We've got gray and white. There's a a house plant back here, white pot, the table. Intentional. It's all very intentional. Now, graphic shirts, for those who are still shopping for them, again, they're kind of leaning into the 70s and 80s with the graphics, a little bit of 90s yeah. as well. This, this, you know, very, very maximalist, um, crazy designs, they're well, becoming popular. I've never seen them put two separate people in the same costume before. They're both wearing the same costume. shirt and the same well, drop these, down necklace. These are from Target <clears throat> Mines. So they're okay. So that's it's popped up on there. You're right. Yeah. Um, straw handbag. So remember those textures? There's a big bold chain. Um, lots of bright, crazy neon colors. Let's see. Nails. I know that we've got a couple alphas who make uh, nail polish. We've got a couple alphas who make um, press-ons, different custom press-ons. Look at this. how this photo is staged. Ignore the product. Look at this nice piece of faux fur and this lavender here and the colors and how they come together. Mm -hmm. For those of you who make jewelry, this would be such a pretty way to display jewelry or maybe a journal. I know that some of you do uh, like planners. This is a whole vibe. Lavender in your photos. That's another one that I've been seeing a lot. And then look at this one, how they've they haven't really done a lot of editing here, but we've got these kind of little uh they're like little nautical pieces, like little branches and shells. Really nice color palette in this photo. Greenery. Um, we've got this nice greenery wall, a very mid-century modern couch. That's a very unique way to do a wall. Yeah. I All I can think about is how dusty it would get. Uh-huh. You'd have to blow it out. <laughs> yeah. Look at the color palette in this house. Look at the, the couch. It's kind of got like a tweed. Um... And what are these guys? These these I've it's rope. It's well, knotted rope. No, it's got the, these beaded thingies. I've been seeing them on like um, what are the the trays that we have like up on our dining room? Or our... I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be nautical rope. No, they're beaded, and I, I saw them at uh, Hobby Lobby. They had oh. them for every holiday with big like Easter eggs. What are these? Because I had a, a, like all the houses that I grew up in, they had the the like super dense like yeah, twisted I, nautical. I know what you're talking about, um, but that's not what these are. <laughs> these are like little beaded strands. Like, it's so small, I can't hardly tell. Um, pairings of three, and that was something that Mark has been kind uh-huh. of looking into. Pairings yeah, of rule, three, rule of thirds is what it's is what it's called. So we've got book, little looks like a candle holder, and then this little beaded thingy. <laughs> whatever said garland no, it's not quite a garland 
they they kind of just lay. I mean, that could be what it's called, but I'm um, not sure. Potted plant. Again, roll of thirds. Yeah. And and look at the wood. Look at this one. That is a ruggable rug. One of those, we have a ruggable, mm. a washable rug, but they've put it over top of what looks like an outdoor textured mat. Yeah, they said beaded rope garland. Oh, okay. Yeah, very, very interesting that you, you just kind of like lay them around. You don't hang them. You just lay them. It's, it's, it's different. Lots of textures. Even the lamp is textured. Woods. Um, lots of white and black and brown mm. colors. So basically do your house up like it's going to be an action movie with things that you can beat up the bad guys with. You got a rope to them well, out with and you got pots and plants you can hit them with. We just went and saw the new John Wick. So I'm really excited and angry. Yeah, he's, he's... I'm hoping for a group of 10 people to break into my house. So I can <laughs> you... Super action star my way through it. <laughs> Choke them out with my beaded garland. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Action mark. Action mark. All right. So um so throw my back out, Mark. <laughs> yeah, right. So um target.com slash finds if you want to explore more of these. They go on and on and on. You can go to um, you know, and, and take a peek at some of these storefronts. These are all different um influencers who have their own little collections of products that they recommend. You can also go down and choose different categories if you want to dive more in. Um, they even have a Christmas category that you can look through. But let's go into the actual target finds, or I'm sorry, target trends. Target finds. Let's finds. go into the finds. The finds, the target style. Um, you can also access this by going into what's new and clicking hashtag target style. Hashtag. The, hashtag. These are different photos that actual shoppers have taken. So we're seeing little glimpses into their lives. And I usually I usually get the vibe that these are people who have a little bit of money to spend. I, I can always get that vibe. They, they It's always very upscale houses and things like that. But that's good because we can kind of take a peek at all of their trinkets and things that they've purchased. So let's take a peek. Um, floral dresses, big patterns, monochrome. Look, she's got all these cards and little prints. And they've all, this is a really good photo right here. For those of you who do prints, cards, stationery, all very 70s kind of fonts, colors, um, little affirmations. This is actually a really, really good resource, this photo right here. Um, let's see, we've got, if for anybody who's preparing for summer, she's got on, looks like leopard print bikini, but I also see like palm leaves and things on them. So bright colors. It's a, it's one of those mixed textures. Yeah. It took like three different fabric. But, but then she's wearing white over top trucker hats. I know a lot of you do POD and you're like, Ooh, look at all these trucker hats that they've and just, for been. some reason they're in. Uh, yeah. Trucker hats are are very popular. So, you know, it's just the the standard snapback baseball hat, but with like the mesh on the back. This, the, is, the, this is the trend of the year that I can't get on top of. The trucker hat. Why well, spend all the time to do your hair up nice if you're going to stick an ugly trucker hat? <laughs> Like, Maybe it's because we grew up with like trucker type dudes. No, I don't sticky. think that's it. I just think it. It's 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 like wearing a top hat that sits on the top of your head. Like if you can't pull it down, you just like you're wearing look like you're wearing a goofy hat. <laughs> so this one, um, for one, <clears throat> let's start by looking at this lampshade. This lampshade has been out of style now for a while. Sorry for all of you who have the the accordion lampshades. They yeah, they're really way out of style. They've been out for a while. But looky here, look at this trendy home with this accordion style lampshade. Does this mean that these lampshades are gonna come back? Who knows? This is a nice little clue though. Um, Back here, <laughs> she's got some type of- Our framed... Airbnb that we went to the year before last did that where it's it's supposed to look like an old like chunk of carpet in a frame. I mean, it might be something, maybe it's some type of- It's supposed to be like a family heirloom, like everybody well, gets a cut of grandpa's carpet when he dies. One of those weird things that turned into a trend that people just stick carpets on their wall. Is that it? <laughs> I mean, it might be an artifact. You never know. Maybe it could be. That's what the the Airbnb we stared at. That they, they had their uh, they had the carpets with their family crests on them, and then they framed the sh them. The shrouds. The shrouds. The shrouds. I don't know, but this this overall like aesthetic. They've got some pottery, some books. Um, 
Um, yeah, they said I've seen those lampshades a lot lately. Yeah, I yeah. have too. There's nothing particularly wrong with them. They just kind of went out of fashion for a while and they switched out for the uh, kind of fabric-y, completely flat mm -hmm. lampshades. Look at this color <laughs> palette here. This is this is nice. We've got like a fur rug. If you notice, the faux fur is big. Um, we've got a plant. We've got a nice color. This, this color, we see it reflected on this little coffee mug. This kind of, uh, it's almost like a, like a, sage or mm -hmm. like a kind of pine color um got that intentional organized chaos going on where it's like way too much stuff but they've organized it yeah like maximalist um here's that color again that kind of orangey color my favorite thing is the matching family up there it tells a story look how no one in the picture looks happy this baby, it looks like mom is really frustrated because these. That's that's that was what I was gonna say. The two babies probably wouldn't stop crying. The third one wouldn't cooperate, and she's just like, "Okay, take the picture." Take the picture. <laughs> this baby is just like, ah. "We've all been there, yep. either in one or around one." <laughs> um, we have another textured carpet, nice color palette here. We're seeing more of that kind of green. Mm -hmm. I look like a hotel room. It, that's kind of how all of the popular. This does look like very hotel, but you know Min what? Minimalist kind of thing, because that's how hotels do fancy minimalism. Yeah. So they don't have to buy a lot of stuff, invest a lot in a little. Lots of good colors to look at. Again, very, very minimalist. Um, they all kind of do look like hotel rooms, but I'm assuming that these are, you know, bedrooms. The, yeah, these people's homes. Um, Maybe you just like a lot of clutter. I do. I like I like to build a nest. I'm a nester. I want to grab little little things to collect. Mm -hmm. Our house is chaos. It's but it's organized chaos. I like it. I'm a maximalist. Um, something that Mark and I were doing a little bit of research into yeah, love that. little <laughs> kids outfits that look like adult outfits. Are, I love it. It's so cute. So I noticed it at Target too. I just bought our daughter a pair of cute little denim shorts oh, like yeah. these. Look at that outfit. Um, yeah. So if you do like kids t-shirts, make their t-shirts kind of look like adult shirts. Um, it, put little cute little graphics, make them look like little band tees and things. They even got it all nineties up. Look, yeah. They got the, what, are, what are those new balances they got are them they... in the newbies that's <laughs> so cute love it so cute excuse me um more textures <laughs> again these these round lamps i'm noticing that lots of whites and greens and browns look here's another one whites and greens um tweed yeah what are these what are these called i we had one when i was a kid we just called it the buffet we just we because we kept it in the kitchen we just called it the buffet the, the chesterfield the che it's not a chest our couch was the chesterfield I know. I know. <laughs> go put it on the davenport that my grandma I have, I have no idea what that's called my grandma she was very proud of her davenport she would say go put it on the i'm a 90s kid so what that is is a tv stand a tv stand um old frames too for those of you who do vintage start upcycling some of the old frames that you're finding people are really really digging the crazy old frames mm -hmm. there there's just so much guys there's so many colors but a lot of it is very much in this brown and white and textures and and grays which we've kind of seen for a while now but it's almost like the fashion has gone bright and vibrant and big and floral mm -hmm. and the decor has gone quiet so quiet decor bold and crazy outfits are really what i'm seeing a lot of in in the mainstream um so the last thing that we're going to do is go over to e-rank so i can show you all how to find some trends when you first log in over at e-rank you'll see our new tasks page which will ask you what you want to do by the way if you don't ever want to see this again you can select don't show this page again um this is just a way that we enhance the e-rank experience so that you know if, if you are new here, you know exactly what tool you need to go to. But let's go into trends and let's go into monthly trends. Now I'm not gonna go through all of the trends, but I'm gonna show you how to find trends. So what you can do is, you know, you can take a peek at what was trendy last month because our data, you know, it's always for the month before. It doesn't come in in real time over at E-Rank. But what you can do is pop into around, you know, summer last year so maybe we'll try let's look at july i feel like july is a good yeah because that's like the peak where, where yeah. trends start to stop and where fall trends start to rise 
summer jewelry, mm -hmm. it appears, that's when it really took off. So think about all the colors and the things that we saw today, um, all the bright, bold, crazy neons and, and tropical themes. People are searching summer jewelry in July. How could you cater some of those trends that we saw today, what is currently trending, with what people were searching for in July? Um, minimalist. We see that a lot in decor, and it's maintained pretty well. Um, so you could absolutely incorporate in some minimalist decor. Um, summer gift. That's interesting. That's an interesting trend. Let's see. Bridesmaids and weddings. And this little flame icon indicates that it was popular yesterday, but we see most of the shopping for weddings in July. Mm-hmm. Uh, fall. Yeah. Mid-century modern. Yeah, That's yeah. That's making a comeback. That's been popular for a, for a hot minute. It looks like it quieted down after the holidays, but I mean it's still it's still very popular. We just bought a mid-century. Yeah, we just bought a mid-century modern couch. Oh, okay. I was like, why is that 2023 up here? But yeah. So it looks like it did kind of die down after the holidays, didn't it? Yeah, it's very strange. I'm very surprised by that. I guess it was a 2022 trend. Guess I'm wrong. Miranda said millennial gray. We always get so stressed out. We chill, crave chill colors at home. Yeah. I mean, everything we own um, is we're, gray. We're sick of we're sick of being witness to global events. <laughs> we just need a little bit of gray when we get home. Earrings. Um, they were especially popular yesterday. We can see that here. Um, so think about again the colors, wall decor, very popular, rings, very popular, tote bags. Um, looks like they take off a lot in July, probably because more mm -hmm. people are wanting to take their their stuff to the park, maybe their laptop and their notebook or take, you know, their bag on vacation with them or to the beach. So tote bags in the summer, car accessories seem to take off in the summer as well. Uh, maybe little air fresheners. Hi, Pam. Some of you do seat covers for cars for, you know, print on demand. I know a lot of you do like art prints on seat covers and things. Um, let's see. Neon signs have been pretty trendy, especially mm. with all the 90s and uh, 80s themes. Yeah. So, um. Strangers things. Strangers things. No strangers. Not to be confused with stranger things. Str it's just strangers things. It's things that you sell that are from strangers. <laughs> it's our vintage sellers, right? It's like vintage, but it's theftage. <laughs> Yeah, don't use, uh, I don't think that using strangers things will help you uh, stay away from copyright. Harry Styles. I've got one of those. I've got a Harry style. Yeah. Look, poor Harry. Poor Harry hasn't been, he, 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 had, he wasn't very popular in Thank March. God. Um, let's see. Lots of, lots of good ideas here. And what you can do is if you specifically make, um, you know, We'll say that you do a POD company and you do mugs. You can see what mugs were popular as well. Um, what I recommend is try to combine some of these trends. For example, if we go into, let's say, paper and party supplies, and we see what type of paper and party supplies were popular. Bachelorette party decorations were hot yesterday. Let's take a peek at what is in here sonic sonic well can't Gotta do go fast boyfriend birthday gift so that isn't necessarily in paper and party supplies you could use that you know anytime um ooh, look bachelorette itinerary template check that out for july guys and Good then lord it... we have data for it so it's not a lack of data wow who does digital which one of you does dibbidjubble? Dibbidjubble. Who does dibbidjubble? That was big for a month last year. That could have just been something that right, something, but, something went viral for a month and it hasn't been popular since. But digital <laughs> is such Excuse an me. easy, like, if you do a digital product, like that could take you, that yeah, could be a couple. Yeah, templates are not that much work. Yeah, yeah. That would be an easy one to toss together and experiment <clears> with. <throat> Somebody should write that down. Um, lots of good ideas here, but things that can be combined into other ideas. So just be careful. Winnie the Pooh, I wanted to bring up the, the Barbie movie. The trailer just came out for yeah. that. No Barbie. Don't no, touch that. You can't use keyword Barbie pink. You can't do anything Barbie themed. Rainbow. Okay. So we saw that, you know, we're in paper and party supplies, but rainbows 
You know, we have to also think about Pride Month is coming up. So there are so many ways that you could incorporate in rainbows to other products. Oh, um, yeah. Bold, crazy earrings. And those are good for festival season, too. Um, you know. Yeah, which is already, like, ongoing and will be until, like, September yeah october yeah so um i think that that's good you guys can explore erank.com um mm. if you do not already have an erank account the free account i believe you can only see the top 10 trends however if you don't already have an erank account down below i have my free etsy seo toolbox the etsy se oodles just look for the little bowl of ramen noodles and it uh, comes with a free ramen recipe that i made it does it comes with a free ramen recipe it comes with a whole you know set of tutorials on how to do etsy seo but if you don't already have an e-rank account and you're signing up with a new email address there is a link where you can sign up and you can get a 30-day trial of any of the e-rank uh paid plans and though i am a manager at e-rank I don't get paid for you guys using that. It's not like an affiliate link. Um, that is a really cool opportunity for you to have 30 uninterrupted <clears throat> days to play with E-Rank, play with all of the yeah. you know top tier tools. And you know if you end up not wanting to keep your plan, you can just cancel it. Um, you guys are gonna go ahead and get your questions in. They do not have to be related to the topic at hand. Yeah, so I hope that this gave you guys some ideas. Um, I'm kind of digging the trends this season. Normally I'm not happy with the summer trends. I love the fall and winter and then summer and spring. I'm, mm -hmm. I usually don't care for them as much. I'm, I'm more of like, I like my big flannels and things. Um, but I really, really love the seventies palettes that are coming into play. Mm -hmm. And you're the same way. You like the seventies um, palettes yeah, as I well. Like, I like the vibe. Yeah. I'm a hippie though. That's yes. what it is. My, my hippie boy, my hippie boy. You probably wouldn't know that by looking at me. No, it's hard to tell, but. I am kind of a hippie. He is. He. he I'm like, not. Pa I'm not like pacifist, but I am kind of a hippie. Yes, you are. You're. <laughs> you're a sweetie. You're a sweetie. You're a strange person. You're a sweetie. Uh, I have a question. Do I make two listings on Etsy if I want to sell on US and Europe from Printify, Monster Digital US, and one from UK? Um. No, because your actual. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> Do I need to make two listings? No, I don't think so, because it's just going to redirect. If you're using Printify, it'll redirect to whichever. I I'm, I'm feel like I'm misunderstanding this question. I believe with Printify, it'll redirect to whichever location, I thought, like whichever print facility is closest. That might be a question that you want to post in the Printify POD Rockstars group, um, because it's full of Printify staff, though I have done a lot with Printify over the last few months um, and their education team, I don't know all of the specific ins and outs of Printify because they work with so many individual uh, print companies and each of those print companies are a little bit different, whereas um, Printify, they print everything from Printify. You're getting <coughs> Printify prints from Printify. Print full, or no, I'm sorry, Printify is... I got them all mixed up. Printful is the one that prints everything themselves. Printify prints everything um, from separate sure. print companies. And because of that, trouble today. I am because of that. Printify is going to have different policies and things per print supplier. Printify rock stars, POD rock stars group on Facebook. You guys better that. get your questions in if you have questions. Otherwise, you won't have to cut the stream off pretty early. <gasps> we have no questions. Oh, my goodness. They're so odd. There's 230 of you here. I know somebody has a question. They're Imperfect odd workshop. by the trends. Imperfect Workshop said, how are you? How are we? Pretty good. Band practice with my band for the first time in like three months yesterday. So that was pretty cool. I'm I'm, I'm still dealing with some stress, some legal things that I can't really talk about, but that I've teased. I, nothing I think, with our business. No, nothing related to business. Just something that I've been dealing with. But, you know, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I've got my coffee. We're going to hang out this weekend, enjoy our Easter. E-Rank says they're sending an email on how to log in, but I never receive it. You need to uh, go ahead and drop our support gals an email at support at erank.com. And either uh, Debbie, Pam, or Irina will get back with you and help you out. 
Yep, there you go. Email them yourself. And if you're not getting an email from eRank, check your spam box. Yep, support at eRank.com. And then make sure that you don't have them blocked in your email if you're still not receiving them. Outside of that, use a different email address because it sounds like something's messed up if neither of those works. Yep, yep. Uh, if I have missing tags and a listing, will it affect the listing if I add tags? I've been waiting for this slide to ask you. No, you're adding, you're not subtracting. Subtracting means that you could accidentally take something away that could, uh, you know, interrupt something that you are broad matching for and could, you know, mess up your, uh, you know, if you had traffic coming in for a specific combination of keywords. If you're just adding keywords, though, you're totally fine. Uh... Print for reroutes, printify, you have to manually pick. There we go. Got okay, it. got it. Uh, not a question, but maybe useful for digital sellers. Zazzle now allows digital downloads for art prints and posters. Oh, okay. Cool. E-Rank competition sales used to be able to print right from the comp sales screen and now can only download a CSV. Same with keyword lists. New or am I doing something wrong? Um, I'm not sure, but keyword lists, the point of them is to not print them. They're supposed to store them for you because every month, they change, they change. update. So my question is, why do you want to print them? Because they are constantly changing and it's only going to even be accurate for that particular month. Um, I didn't know that we got rid of that ability. I don't, because I just don't use it, nor do I think it's super practical. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Pam, are you still here? Did you know that we got... I didn't even know that we had the ability to print right through. I knew that we had a, the option to export as a CSV. I didn't realize that we had a print button on E-Rank. Because I've never used it. Uh, E-Rank competition yep. sales. Yeah, it's yeah, I did that. <laughs> do, you need my, do you need my coffee? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, what step should I take when opening my Etsy store not to impact my roommate's established Etsy store? Don't break the rules. Don't, yeah, don't break the rules. <laughs> don't break the rules. You guys are connected by an IP address, so don't don't break the rules. Don't make any copyright product. Ship your orders on time. Um, read Etsy's policies. All that good stuff. Uh, does Society6 get much traffic versus Redbubble and Zazzle? We don't use them, so we can't honestly answer that question. But Society6 does get <clears throat> a lot of traffic because usually if you Google it, most people will say well, to sell on Society6 or Etsy or Redbubble. Pop, poppy rank up. We can compare them. We have a new tool for that. Did you know that? Yes, I use it all the time. For oh, our... duh. That's right. <laughs> all right. This you, woman, I swear. You can go ahead and... Uh... Let me... Uh... I'll pop this over here so I can still see things in case anybody says anything naughty. And yeah, we... then I'll move it over to the screen and do this. Okay. Okay. Maximize this. Close all these. Okay. Can't see what's going on on the screen, but that's fine. I'm sure it's there. All right. We're going to go over to compare sites. I actually might need to pull this off of the screen because I don't know if anything's going to pop up when I yeah, click we... in here. Now we're good. We use this for, um, we use We're it. We're not doing E-Rank. We're doing, uh... Zazzle, Society6, and Redbubble. Zazzle.com. Yep. Comma. Society6.com. And then what? Redbubble? Yes. All right. Redbubble is clearly the most popular. Zazzle under that. Society6 is significantly lower. Uh, their site traffic, wow, their site traffic is low. So this is their their global rank. Their, yeah. their rank of their website based on, I don't know what Anthony actually uses. For you can this hover data. over uh, the rank and country to get a. <clears throat> site rank displayed for the country based on selected country data. So that told me nothing. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, so Redbubble, number one, Society6, shortly behind that. For, this is their search rank, Zazzle. Are we able to add Etsy into the mix just so yeah. comparatively? Um, they, <laughs> there you go. Just so they can see. Okay, and yeah. Obviously, Etsy spanks it. Yes. Yeah. Etsy is number 38, which means it's the 38 <laughs> highest website used based on the data that we use. Yeah, so um, this is the the new sites tool over at eRank. This is not good for using for your websites because you likely just don't have the traffic necessary to pull good data. Um, but the tool is is mainly for if you get shouted out somewhere, you can see, oh, does this influencer really like get a lot of traffic? 
Um, if you are trying to decide where to sell, you can kind of see, okay, which, which website can I expect will have the most shoppers? So I, I think it's a really useful tool. We use it a lot mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, I use around. it to, to verify when websites have been created and when data started being received, that kind of stuff. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. The one that you've highlighted is the not... one that I just read. No, it's oh, not. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. And the, we, there are still a lot. Yeah. It probably is just a goof for me moving it over here, baby girl. Okay, there we go. Oh, you call me baby girl on stream. That's I've done cute. it many times. That's cute. That's cute. It okay. almost was the next question, though, you stinky. You're stinky. Uh, if we sign up with a free <laughs> E-Rank account and then later sign up for Handmade Alphas, are we not able to get the E-Rank for a year? You are. We take over your account for a year. Yeah. You, well, we don't take over your account. We pay for it. For yeah. A year. Yeah. If you sign up now and you sign up for Handmade Alpha Academy in June, all you got to do is it's not an automatic <laughs> thing. You have to email me um, and say, hey, you know, I already pay for E-Rank Pro. Mm -hmm. Can we you... send you an email when you sign up for Handmade Alpha Academy with instructions on how to activate. Yeah, and um, for those who are new here, Handmade Alpha Academy is my nine-module training program that'll be opening in June, and uh, you get 12 months of E-Rank Pro with that. But if you already have an E-Rank Pro or basic subscription, um, basically, we just turn those payments off for you, and uh, that goes into my billing for 12 months. So I take care of that for you. I missed the beginning. You may have covered this. I'm seeing a dramatic drop in traffic, and I hear some of the same from others. Any reasons besides the things I can control on my end? No, not not that we know of. Sometimes drops happen. Well, it's just the nature of the internet. Christy, how long have you been selling? We're, I mean, for one, we are going through a lot of political and world stress, which always leads to a drop in sales. Uh, around elections in the U.S., you can always expect a drop in sales. During times of war, you can always accept or expect a drop in sales. And we're Things also, are insanely political right now. There's mm -hmm. multiple uh, potential wars popping up. People yeah. are, some people are paranoid. N and not only that, but if you're a newer seller, we are entering the spring and summer slump. This is a, an annual occurrence. You can, you can look at Etsy historical data and see every spring and summer things slow down. If you've been selling for many, many years and you're noticing a slump, um, I we are kind of hitting a poor economic climate. Um, things that you can control on your end. Yeah, people might not be around on Etsy shopping, but they're on social media looking for validation for the things in their lives that are stressing them out. They're still scrolling Instagram, posting pictures, trying to make themselves feel good, getting those little dopamine rushes. You need to start your advertising if you haven't already. Get on social. And if you are not doing well on social, you need to refine that process and use your slow spring and summer as a chance to really, really um, invest time into learning what marketing is going to work for you. Is there now, something weird happening right now? Somebody said, what is happening? Let us know. Um, down below. You can't if something's happening. Well, I'm just going to keep talking. Down below is our 30-day Instagram challenge kit. If you need a little bit of help, uh, you know, kind of springboarding and creating content and not knowing like when to post, what to post, check that out. It's totally free. It's going to give you tons of content. Um, it's going to give you ideas. It's going to give you an exact schedule to follow. And it's 30 days, but you can start day one of your 30 days at any time. It's not like, you know, oh, you have to join in on a certain day. It's it's free and you pick your 30 days. So I use Marmalade, uh, apparently nothing, but he said anything. Oh, uh, I, don't, I don't know what uh, Gilligan's talking about right now. What you talking about, Gilligan? Uh, I use Marmalade and it has a grading system. Does E-Rank have something similar? Yeah. E-Rank has a grading system based on Etsy's best practices. I don't know what Marmalade's grading system is based off of. It's either based off of the same thing or something arbitrary that they've decided is good for your listings. Yeah, so uh, in your listing audit on E-Rank, you'll be able to see your grades. Just don't, no matter how low your grades are on certain listings, if a listing is selling, don't focus on grades. Don't freak out. Grades are not a, a an indicator of listing success. They just tell you whether or not you're following Etsy's best practices. And many a sellers have said, my grades were a D and I changed everything and now they're an A and now my listing isn't selling. Don't change anything that is already selling well because you're already, you've already built a listing quality score for that listing, even if the letter grade was bad. Some of my best performing listings in my first shop, like my listings that would sell every single day, had terrible grades. 
Don't touch those. Uh, what kind of things should we putting be putting in our Instagram highlights? Thank you. Banana highlights. I love that. Depends on what you sell and when um, you sell them. Yeah. Um, you could do FAQs. Um, for yours, you could do um, time lapses. Time lap. Yeah, time lapses. You could do about me is a fun one. Um, I just went through the Handmade Alphas Instagram and created all new highlights with information, and I'm kind of building new highlights. Um, but really, it's, it's up to you. I would look at other people in your niche and see what they're doing. Uh, I just opened my shop on Saturday. I feel like I overpriced an item. Will it hurt me to lower the price? No, absolutely not. And you know what? Start with a high, a too high price. You can always go backwards eventually, but if you just started your shop, leave it high and see what happens. It's, it's you know, how do you know you overpriced an item? It's going to be a while before you make those first sales. It, it can take time. Um, I would leave, I would prefer to overprice and then drop my prices later. Uh, are there specific policies about listing videos? Mine seem to have been taken down, but no notification email. They just disappeared. That sounds like a bug. Uh, no, not that I know of. I mean, as long as there's nothing like nudity or... Yeah, I think they follow the same rules as like the pictures and things you can post on Etsy. So I would reach out to their support. Yeah, that's weird. No, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, other than common sense stuff. You already offer a nice discount for those on the email list. Is there a way you can also offer discount post sale that would also be a perk? Yes, you could include a coupon in the package when you send it to yeah. them or in the email that you send them afterwards if with their digital download or however that you send them their product. You can always include a, a higher discount coupon that they could use. They can't stack them. Yeah. But, but sure. Maybe like, you know. 5% more than what your VIP discount was. Just make sure that when you're doing that, that if you send them a message that it is transactional, make sure you're not emailing customers from two years ago to give them a coupon. Yes. You can't, you can't do that. It has to be related to their current transaction. Yeah. Ooh, doo -doo -doo. If you have multiple colors for a shirt. Would you list each individually or keep them all in the same listing? I think it depends on how many shirts you have. If you've already got a hundred different shirts in your shop, it might you, be better just to have them stacked. I would, I would definitely consider just keeping them all in one yeah. listing. Um, if you only have like four sh shirts in your shop and you're not interested in adding any additional designs, then you know, changing up the colors and making sure you, your thumbnails are reflective of the color that you're selling might be great as well. I wouldn't just fill your shop with the mm -hmm. exact same design over and over for the sake of having different colors, though. Um, those could be kept in one listing. Uh, when I'm looking at search trends, I'm confused as you to why. Trends. Yeah, you rank search trends as to why average clicks are higher on some than average searches. You're clicking on more than one thing when you search for a thing. So you could click on, or you could search for something, and then you click on seven different listings to check them all out to decide what you're on. It's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah. Lots of clicks for mm -hmm. those searches, which that's yeah. actually good because it means that the people who are searching are very interested in what they're seeing. They're, in, they're investigating. Yes, they're interested. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I have two shops, can I just post the same listing in both? You cannot. Etsy will actually shut your shop down for that. That is against Etsy's policy, so do not do that. <laughs> uh, I just want to say that I like ChatGPT. Awesome. M me too. I love it. <laughs> I use it a lot for everything. Uh, I've been following your videos and have niched way down. I'm new to E-Rank, and while I'm enjoying the tool, it does overwhelm me. You're not alone. It's data. Uh, what should I focus on once logged in? Just trends? Down below. Down below in the uh, in the video description um, is my Etsy SE Oodles toolbox. It's free. That explains like pretty much my favorite tools, which are primarily the keyword tool uh, and your listing um, your rank checker tool. And then trends are kind of a fun additional tool, but they're not something. I mean, they're fun. You get a lot of good insight when you're creating new products, but really the keyword tool and the rank checker and uh, the change uh, track changes tool, those are like the three that I feel sellers should be using the most. That toolkit basically contains YouTube videos that I've done on Etsy SEO, and you guys know I have hundreds of them, but I went through every single video that I've ever done on Etsy SEO I picked, I think, the six or seven most important, 
and I put them in the exact order that you should watch them if you're trying to use E-Rank for your Etsy SEO. So that should help you a lot because mm -hmm. it also shares the tools that I personally feel are the most important. Uh, I have two to three items related to the holidays that have passed, such as St. Patrick's Day and Easter. Should I deactivate those now that my storefront, that, so my storefront doesn't seem outdated? Um, You can. It doesn't really matter. If it, you're going to sell them next year, you could deactivate, put them up next year. You okay. could also do a clearance sale on them. Not If you don't want the inventory sitting around, you could sell them at that cost. Right. Or, or leave them in there and just rearrange your shop. Uh, you wouldn't believe how many people don't realize that you can rearrange your shop. Just go to your actual storefront where you see like your manner and everything. And on the left side, you'll see a button that says edit shop, click that. And then right before your listings start, you've got all your little listings light up on the, on the right side. There is a button that says rearrange listings. Take all those St. Patrick's day items and drag them to the last page of your shop. Um, and then you can just keep them listed. Now they're not probably not going to sell, but either way, in terms of like your shop itself, they're not going to hurt. They're just not going to sell. So you can safely deactivate them <laughs> if you want to. Amanda said, how many people on the wait list for the class in 67 days? Wondering what my chance is. That's just what we call the email list for that. We open it for 10 days in order to keep people organized within the same launch. That way they're able to communicate together. We're able to keep track of everyone that signs up, but it's not like a, a wait it's for it's for waiting in not a yeah like tiered waiting list where like you're the thousandth to sign up so you're the thousandth that'll get the email it's not no, like that no it's, there's there's only 10 days to sign up yeah it's so you get notified as soon as it opens right it's for you to wait on because it never fails <laughs> that right when we close the doors at midnight on the 10th day so i had like six people email me last time so it's like six and we've already closed the cart and shut it and everybody's like well can't you just reopen it no it takes a long time for us to do and if i open it for you <laughs> then everybody else who missed it is gonna jump on it too it's, at a, so, it's a constant start stop start stop like we're only two people so we got to kind of keep class sizes small but it really is however many people get in during the 10 days that were yes. open twice a year it's June. it's more manageable especially on the payment side of things if people all sign up around the same time it is it it started as as a as a scarcity as a scarcity tactic and it became a convenience factor <laughs> for us it, re it really did i know everybody's like you would make so much more money if you left it open all the time and i'm like it's not worth it do you know it. how hard it is to up Update a WordPress system, which is not built from the ground up for selling things on to update a payment system that takes monthly payments when there's constantly monthly payments. I get like 10 days at the end of every sales cycle between the last payment month and the next course enrollment to update the website. That's all I yep. get. Okay. Anyway, enough of that crap. If you guys have questions about Handmade Alpha Academy, though, you're free to you're free to ask. We, we, we may not get to them today. We might. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, Society6 is awesome and they have a product range, but they take forever to upload artwork on and have little to no editing software on their platform. Oh, yeah. Redbubble's okay. quicker to upload and more art friendly. Zazzle is the middle ground. Can't wait to try Mark's ramen recipe. So you might. Good. Oh, yeah. I, I like it. It's nowhere near traditional. <laughs> like, I don't do traditional, I do taste good. So, yeah. Uh, I'm usually a fan of slices of pork belly and a half hard boiled egg on top of mine. I do the just egg yolk right on top as soon as you pour the broth. That way the egg yolk kind of pasteurizes on top of the. Yeah, that's free. The ramen recipe was a bonus with our Etsy SE oodles because it's themed in ramen. So Mark may shared mm -hmm. his ramen recipe with it. It's very good. Yeah. And for those of you who are curious and want to put raw egg on things, um, you can pasteurize eggs and yeah. make totally raw eggs edible. Um, Society6 new fees for shipping they're passing on to artists makes me not want to upload there. I don't know anything about it. Focus on questions. Uh, Focus on questions so we can get through. We're going to fight. <laughs> I emailed Anthony like you suggested, and he's looking into getting Zazzle again. Cool. It, it all depends on how much data there is for it. Um, Because I've brought it up in the past, and last time we we checked. What about Gumroad? Do you mean Gumtree? I have Gumroad. <laughs> Gumtree, the, the, no idea. the platform Gumtree. I think that we actually have Gumtree data at E-Rank. We used to. I don't know if we still do, but we did have Gumtree for a while. Is it worth making a listing for a limited time sale? Like if I were making a body care item 
in a limited fragrance for a holiday. It's worth it if it sells. Sure. sure. It's not going to do anything bad. It's 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 not going to hurt you. Sure. Are you lost, baby girl? <laughs> what even <laughs> what, what even was this pit smell like basil comment, Dulce? What even was that? <laughs> that's, that's so random. Uh, does E-Rank ever plan to add sales estimates by location? For example, if you checked out a local seller stats in EU country and want to see which other country EU countries buy from uh, the most, that would require us having the data on where people sell. And that kind of gets into the privacy privacy yeah. issues. So we're probably not going to touch something like that. We did return uh, sales estimates are back on E-Rank uh -huh. uh, because everybody was really upset that it went away. Mm -hmm. um, so they're back. Uh, but they're only about 80% accurate because they are an estimate. We we can only work with the data that comes directly from Etsy's API. And, and they don't give us a lot of private information exactly. like this. So we we can't really touch and say that it's super accurate. Yeah. Questions? Yeah. Uh, Christy had said, uh, I score very high on E-Rank SEO score and had a first page listing, but getting sometimes zero hits a day for the first one. Um, there is no such thing as I scored very high on E-Rank SEO score. That's we not, don't have an SEO score. There's no SEO score. If you have a high grade. That is Etsy's best practices, it's which not, you can find on Etsy. Yeah, it's not looking at your keywords and saying your keywords are good. I could rank, I could get an A grade by calling this my flippity floppity floopity coffity cuppity. And I could still get an A grade. By following Etsy's best practices, we're not. There's no way that we can assess your keywords. You have to experiment with those keywords and test them. In that Etsy SEO tools toolbox that I talked about, it's free down there. Um, you actually, I do teach you how to check on the progress of a listing, though, so that you can kind of um, decide for yourself when it's time to change that listing. Uh, I sell knitted hats and scarves. Should I keep my listings on during spring and summer? It's winter somewhere. Do you ship internationally? It is winter somewhere. It's winter somewhere. It's not summer all over the world. It's winter for some people right now. Perspective. Yeah. I, I saw your live with Printify a couple weeks ago, rebranding. I named my Etsy shop a name I really liked. Yeah. The name would not mean anything to the customer or what I sell. Is this important? Yeah. Uh, if it's, Is it fun? Is it witty? Uh, Google tells you nothing about search. Uh, mm -hmm. Tiffany & Co. It's not called Jewelry & Co. Nike. What the heck is a Nike? That's not a word. You need to ask yourself, is it catchy and fun? And does it kind of connect, you know, uh, a, a mental connection to your brand? Um, you don't need to change your shop name. Just make sure that everything else that you do aligns with your brand. Uh -huh. Uh, are the classes for the academy in person or online? They are online. Oh, God. We on got demand. Uh, whenever you want them, accessible. There's no waits, no delays. No, You just sign up and they're there. Yeah, it's not like a webcam. We all meet at 6 a.m. Who, nah. who the heck has time for that? No. I want to sleep in. I'm sure you want to <laughs> sleep in. I ain't getting up for a, a meeting. No, we just we just re-recorded the entire thing. Um, and it is that you will be getting the same material that all of our six-figure sellers of the past mm -hmm. have taken. You're getting getting a lot of extra courses as well. You're going to be getting uh, Christina Nicole. She's a fantastic photography coach who teaches smartphone photography. You're going to be getting her photography essentials workshop. You're going to be getting our annual alpha holiday boot camp to help you prepare for the holiday season. And you'll when you enroll in HAA, you get the annual holiday boot camp every year. So you don't have to pay the $100 for that. You are just automatically enrolled in that every year afterwards. You get E-Rank Pro. You get a bunch of bonus courses that I've thrown in like Ad Fuel and... Um, yeah, you get a bunch of stuff. Melissa, you don't have to repeat your questions. We do our questions in order, and yours was next anyway. Yeah. Uh, will changing photos on a listing that is selling affect how it sells or just tags and titles? Changing photos affect absolutely nothing other than the interpretation of the customer. Yeah, so no, no effect on ranking, but if the customers don't like the picture <laughs> and they don't click on it, then, you know, obviously you'll want to change your photo back. It has nothing to do with the algorithm. I'm always a fan of redoing things when you get better at skills. Yeah. Same thing we did with Handmade Alpha Academy. We completely record it, yeah. re-recorded it, which we could do again because I got even better at my part, but you don't want to. Not yet. No, it's a lot of work, guys. Uh, I'm back on E-Rank for the first time in about three years, so still finding my way around. <laughs> Is there a way to look at trends for the UK rather than the US? Toggle, I believe. Um, yeah, I believe if we go to... Trends on the far right? Yeah. Trends. Trends. You want to share? Yeah. 
We're on trend buzz, trends, trend buzz. UK, past 30 days. Click apply. There you Voila. go. We got a couple different countries now. There's a lot on E rank. So I say there's no there's no such thing as a stupid question. Boop, boo, doop, doo, doo. <laughs> Long time no see. Hey, Hyman Designs is back. Where oh, you, yo, what up? Where have you been? Uh, no idea how to price my digital products. They're my best sellers, but when I raise or lower, they still sell the same. I don't want to overcharge or undercharge. Any ideas? If they if they Many are selling ideas. if they are selling at a higher cost, leave them there. Leave them there. Oh, they're by, the, the your customers are telling you what they're willing to pay. Mm -hmm. It is easier to make one one hundred dollar sale than it is one hundred one dollar sales. Price at the top. If you're continuing to make those sales, then do not consider dropping those prices. There's no reason to. You're making money. <laughs> Is there a way to integrate Shopify and Etsy? I believe that there is, but I am not the person to ask because I've never done it. I think that there is. Somebody in the chat probably knows. I'm subscribing. I'm thinking of subscribing to my designs. Do you ever use it? I've never heard of it. Never heard of it. What is it? What it do? I don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, I had an email list customer use his list sign up coupon and abandoned cart coupon at the same time. You can't use two coupons at the same time. Yeah. That's Unless the abandoned cart coupon counts differently. Like if it's an auto applied thing, maybe somebody correct us if we're wrong, but I don't think you can stack coupons. No, you've never been able to do it in the past. That's weird. Uh, if a listing has a sales history, does it keep its good status if you change things? For example, if I sell out of an older style of an earring, uh, is it okay or is it worth it to rework that listing for a newer style? Only if the earrings are essentially the same earrings. You can't just swap it out for a totally different pair of earrings in order to maintain the history because it is it is a disservice to the customers who have favorited that item or placed it in their cart because then they're going to look at their favorites or their cart and see a totally different item there and that's not good. So Etsy actually doesn't want us to do that. I always talk about an example where I had um, favorited, like, I think it was like an ankle bracelet or something, just some some cute piece of jewelry. And then I had my daughter sitting next to me and the seller had reused that listing and swapped it out for, was it nipple clamps, I think? Yeah. And I was just like... That's not what I favored. That's not what I favored. And my kid was sitting next to me. Um, so, so don't do that. Yeah, that you know, that's an extreme example, but it's a... It's, it's, it's still applicable. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> Johnny had said you can stack shipping coupons and other coupons. But, really? but is that the same thing as a left cart coupon? Yeah, uh, the abandoned cart feature. Yeah. Um, how do you bundle two listings together? Uh, do you have to create a new listing with both items together or is there a way to combine them? You have nope. to create a new listing if you want to do that. Yeah, or, or add the additional item as a paid variation to the existing item. You could do that where they pay, you know, one price if they just want the, the one item or they could buy both items and it, you know, is a paid variation where you add the additional cost on. You can do that. They said they removed Karen Checker. They, yeah, Etsy didn't like it. Well, Karen Check and the E-Rank Bad Buyer Check were both removed because Etsy's API recently changed and it now does not allow us to access buyer feedback uh, the way that it used to. So if you guys really want those tools back because E-Rank had the same tool right on the homepage, um, you, you can always let... Etsy know that, you know, you use the tool to prevent scammers and things. You know, there are there are like perpetual scammers on Etsy who just go from account to account to account and scam people. Um, and that was a good way to kind of sniff them out. So just politely give Etsy feedback. Uh, I've been watching your videos a lot lately. Thank you. Great content. I'm still struggling with the title creation keyword versus sent would sentence. you sentence uh would you consider doing another video on title creation i've done so many it's really up to you there's you can either add a bunch of keywords or you can try to put those keywords into a short descriptive sentence both work the algorithm doesn't care either way you need to test both in your shop and decide for yourself which is going to work for you. I do already talk about this, though, in the Etsy SEOodles toolbox that I just keep blabbering about, um, but it's free. And if you need help with Etsy SEO, I highly recommend checking that out um, because we do discuss that. But either way, the algorithm doesn't see it any differently. Etsy tells us that customers prefer a short descriptive sentence um, just because it looks cleaner. Mm -hmm. But that's that's customer perceptions. 
The algorithm doesn't count either, doesn't care either way. Um, so it, you really should just test both and see what works for you because every seller is going to experience something different. Uh, move the stuff to the back of your shop. That's what I do if they're out of season. Yep. Then just let the listings run out and renew when it's the appropriate time. Yeah. Yep. That's a great idea. They had said this guy did it and I had to honor it, honor it as Etsy let him do it. Oh. That's, well, we've, we've never seen it. So that's, that's just weird. weird. If, yeah. it's, if that's the case, then fine. Odd. Uh, I'm excited for HAA. I think I can afford it this summer. Awesome. awesome. Do y'all like anime? We do. Some. We don't like a lot of the mainstream stuff. We like a little bit more of the intense stuff, but yeah. Attack on Titan. Helsing is my favorite. He likes Berserk. Um, I, ju I just finished watching through Rurouni Kenshin, which is getting a remake that comes out in like three months. Yeah, Helsing, Helsing and Helsing Ultimate. I, I just read all of the manga for Helsing. Trigon's getting a new season. Anyway, enough we've been out on stream. <laughs> Yes. So the, the answer to your question is some of them. Yeah. We, Not none of the mainstream right, stuff. Right. We tried to watch Demon Slayer. Our daughter loves it. She's 11, but it's a little too. <laughs> Johnny said, is that intense stuff still called anime? Yeah. The stuff we watch is still called anime. Thank you. <laughs> we know. What we you actually mean. prefer there to be no fan service. We don't really care for that. No. Uh, have you ever seen the movie Ponyo? Ramen features prominently yes. in it. It's Studio very cute. Ghibli. Yeah, we love Studio Ghibli stuff. It's good stuff to watch with the kiddo. Yeah, we just turned on Princess Mononoke for her with uh, her friend. Baby girl, Basil Pitts. <laughs> what the hell are you what? guys talking about? I'm... He just said it was a random observation. That's okay. That's understandable. My <laughs> my my whole like I me don't... smell changed after COVID. I I'm a, smell like a completely different person now. I'm so confused. What are you guys going on about? Uh, I don't know. Would you keep your prices for craft fairs the same as Etsy? It depends. Uh, to me, I think it depends on whether or not you're absorbing shipping costs into your prices if you are if say you do free shipping and you put the price of shipping into your uh into your products then if you wanted to you could remove that excess unless you're shipping when we did um like when we did bealcon and big yeah. conventions mm -hmm. we always had a sign up on our booth that said um that they were getting an event price that way if they came to my etsy shop after that and they saw the prices were higher they knew that they were receiving an event special price if they bought at the event which it really was just you know because the shipping wasn't included in things they got a little discount so i'm hearing there are ways to search for unique element groupings on avocado instagram i'm assuming can you share a couple of your favorites to type in unique element groupings i have no idea what you're talking about yeah, I'm sure I'm not, I will if you elaborate. Right. I'm not quite sure what you mean. Feel free to let me know. Whoa, Starla has arms. I know it's so hot down here because of these studio lights. I'm burning up now. I'll They're go. LEDs and generate literally zero heat. So no. oh. she doesn't know what she's talking about. Why is it so warm down here? <laughs> it's my my monitor and my computer because the fans are turned low. Oh. They're letting off heat. That it's not dissipating the heat as far away from the computer. That that particular flannel is a real flannel, which are really hard to find. Yeah. Like there are plaid shirts and then there are real flannels. You you my flannel wears, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. My UK people are like, why are you wearing a washcloth? Because apparently that's what flannels are. <laughs> US okay. people, you know what I'm talking about. Uh it's a 10% conversion rate for digital products. Okay. Um you just have to Google what the industry standard is. I don't know what the industry digital, standard, and I think it depends on your niche, too. Yeah, digital products isn't really your niche. Are you doing, like, wedding digital? Are you doing invitations? Are you doing SVGs for, like, are you doing, like, sublimation type things that people can buy? Like, I, I think it, it's going to all depend. 10% isn't a bad conversion rate, though. Uh, is your course suitable for digital products? It yes. is. If your question about HAA is, is my product suitable for the 99.9% .9 of you, the answer of that question is yes. It doesn't really matter what you sell. Yeah. Now, there are some subcategories to that if you want to. Um, vintage is a little bit harder because the algorithm is not really favor it. Yeah. One off, like one of a kind products, the, the algorithm is going to struggle because Etsy really relies on repeat sales. However, 99% of the course is going to be fine for you. It's just you're going to struggle um, with the SEO portion simply because you can't build listing quality scores. Um, for a long time, we said no, no vintage and no um, one of a kind. But in, in recent years, we've 
had a lot of people who have bought it anyway and said, you know, I'm glad I bought it. So we just kind of throw in the disclaimer that you will struggle. And it is great if you can throw in a couple repeat products, even if it's like a print on demand t-shirt that you can make, you know, that, you know, just to sprinkle something repeat into your shop. Imperfect Workshop said the majority of that anime's dub is just ad libbed. Which anime? Elaborate. Uh, if you sell international, does Etsy automatically translate listings into different languages? Yes, yes they, they do. do. And they are also contextual. Yes. Uh, do you know have any or do you have any idea of how to find your Etsy username as Etsy assigned to me? Their help is no help. It should be that they assign to you. you pretty user, sure you make a username yourself. Your username should be in your actual like if you look at your shop and you see your like little shop owner under your main banner and you click on that, that generates your Etsy profile and it should be whatever that name is. Um, uh, uh, he answered it. He said, go to your profile. And yeah. It's the alphanumeric thing after slash people. Oh, OK, cool. Okay, cool. Thank you, Johnny. Um, okay. I've deactivated 300 old listings that was making daily sales up until last year. I've now put 100 plus new listings last month and haven't gotten any new sales. Yeah, because you deactivated a bunch of listings that had listing quality scores that were helping your overall shop. Um, up here in search. Right. It, it can take 60 to 90 <clears throat> days for you to even generate listing quality scores for all those new listings. Um, if those listings were selling, first of all, why'd you remove them? Second of all... Um, it's going to take time for those other listings to start generating momentum. You're, you're basically, you have wiped the slate clean and you're starting back with zero. Um, so it, it's going to take some time, unfortunately. Do we need to repeat keyword, repeat <laughs> the keywords from the title and the tags? Uh, also, is it bad to use tags that are too broad? Example, digital planner. Um, I'm going to answer this. But a lot of the questions that you guys are asking, again, that Etsy SEO toolbox literally teaches all of this and it's free. Um, you only have to sign up for it because I have it all laid out in a nice like order in, yeah. Um, but everything from your title goes in your tags. Those are the keywords you wanna be known for. Not everything in your tags needs to be in your title. What was the second part of that question? Um, and do we need to, is it bad to use tags that are too broad? Digital planner. No matter what, every term that you have in your title and your tags is going to match in every possible combination. So if one of your keywords is purple kawaii strawberry, and then you've also got digital planner in there, you are going to exact match for digital planner and purple kawaii strawberry, but you're also going to broad match for Purple planner, strawberry planner, strawberry digital planner, uh, digital strawberry planner. It's going to mix them up and put them in every combination. That's broad matching. Exact matches are going to be stronger. The words that are right next to each other are going to be stronger matches, but broad matches do still count. So, How important do you think packaging is? Is it worth spending the extra money to have custom packing tape stickers and fun add-ins? If you can afford yeah. it, I'd like it. It adds to your brand personality. Right. Upgrade <clears throat> in increments. Um, mm -hmm. start with what you can afford and then upgrade one little thing at a time, you know, start with a little custom sticker, then add in maybe, you know, maybe you can afford the, the printed custom tape, um, little increments based on mm -hmm. it, your increases in sales, because they do help with customer perception, repeat buys. And, uh, the you know, part of shopping on Etsy is the experience of opening the product. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Whoa, Starla has arms. Oh, nice. She has arms. If you go to the Ghibli Museum in Japan this summer, we don't know if we're going to get to go to Japan this summer. Unfortunately, our kid has to do summer school. Oh, I know. We're so bummed. Sucks. Okami and we don't want to go in June because it's rainy season. I don't have any Okami tattoos yet, but I do mm -hmm. have a lot. I do have multiple wolves. I'll be getting my Leshen tattoo next month. Yeah, I'm going to be getting <clears> a um, Court of Thorns and Roses tattoo, pro hopefully a cover up for this. Mm hmm wolf that his dad did and butchered. <laughs> uh, I just found out a huge change Etsy made regarding mature listings, but they haven't said anything about it. Are you referring to them putting the the tags on mature products as mature? Because I think we had talked about that. Mm -hmm. You're you're because you were kind of investigating that in awesome. my last uh, Twitch stream. Tattoo tour? Ta question mark? Tattoo tour. They're asking you to show off your tattoos. I've got a wolf up here. <clears throat> with a geometric moon and I have my daughter as a little mermaid down here. 
and I have a wolf with its spine on the outside, and I have my favorite band, Bayside, their bird logo, and then I have a really bad wolf that his dad did, and then I have a key, which these are what I sold in my first Etsy shop, where these keys, fantasy-themed fantasy keys with wings and stuff, but I'm going to be getting this mm -hmm. arm redone with Court of Thorns and Roses. Are you ever going to put your other lip ring back in? I'm not used to seeing you without it. Nope, because it was damaging her tooth. Yeah, my teeth have moved, so I have permanently taken it out. The hole on the inside's already healed. Um, I will not be putting it back, though. I was also sick of getting bullied on the internet. I can't wait to see all the people who watch the replay and complain about me having tattoos that they didn't realize that I was covered in. <laughs> People want me to be Mary Poppins here. I think here. you guys, you guys probably don't know, but we're like metalheads. We're rock and roll people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I go to EDM shows, but I play in a metal band. Uh, Etsy currently suspended my shop because of a policy violation. Can you suggest on how to reinstate my shop? No, not really, because you broke a you broke a policy. Message Etsy. Try to get your shot back and then don't break the rules anymore. Yeah. I mean, that's Us unfortunately. Usually, if they've per if they said that they have permanently <clears throat> suspended you you probably won't get your shot back and you probably won't ever be able to create an account again because it's based on your IP address and you might be out of luck. If you actually broke a Etsy rule, they aren't very lenient with rule breaking. Impossible to answer question. What, what niche would you start in if you were just starting out now? If you gotta do a, the if, research. Yeah, you gotta, whatever works for you. Don't, don't try to, to, niche surf where you just create shops to ride the niche for like a year to make money off of it because it's not sustainable and it's so much more work than just finding something that's going to have a persistent niche that you can slowly grow that will have a consistent kind of fluctuating income over time right. it's less work it's less stressful it's i mean starting any business is stressful but if you're just trying to ride a popular niche you're only going to get, a, so I mean, far. a year, maybe up to like three or four years max, and then you're going to hit a glass ceiling, and then that trend is going to die. It happens all the time. So it's better for you to pick something that you're more passionate about that you could ride over the long term. Did you just say motionless and white woo metal? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to laugh at your what you like, but... <laughs> I'm, I've got like two motionless and white songs that I like. I'm not a fan of that kind of. I don't know. They have mm. a very Manson sound to them. And yeah, I'm not. I don't. I don't care I'm not for a it. Huge, I'm not a huge fan of them. I, they've got a couple. What's that song? The the I'll be unstoppable song where he his voice is very different in that mm. song. I do like that. Uh, one. I'm mostly one of a kind piece. Is trying to figure out how to add more duplicable pieces to my collections without those pieces being really generic ideas. Um, make things that match your more one-of-a-kind pieces uh if you have you know a big extravagant pendant try to create some little bracelets and things that might match that or if there's a common color that you use that way people are more even if they are generic people are more uh willing to purchase them as pairs or you know pairings for your current products uh could you please explain the store rank that you just mentioned does that help every new listing that we publish store rank. listing quality score oh your listing quality score again totally explained in the at the seo toolbox so what you're going to get is a watered down version from me right now sign up for that i have a full like workshop about it in that toolbox your listing quality score is a score that etsy assigns to every single listing on the platform when you first join at or uh, list a new product on etsy it doesn't have a listing quality score. So that brand new listing, Etsy boosts it in search and moves it all around, starting out for the first 60 to 90 days that that item is listed, because it wouldn't be fair for listings with no quality score at all to be all the way at the bottom. So Etsy gives them a little advantage and then they monitor how shoppers interact with that listing. Every time a shopper organically discovers that listing in search based on specific keywords and, you know, they they click on it every time that listing sells, which is a, a one of the best things that can grow your listing quality score. And every time a list or a customer leaves a positive review for a listing, all of those factors help your listing quality score, which is what will help your rank. Keywords in your listings are one very, very small part of the, the equation when it comes to how the algorithm ranks those listings in search. The primary thing that helps listings to rank are your listing quality score. And the, and the sucky thing is you don't get to know what that quality score is. It's not something you can look up. 
But if you've ever had a listing in your shop that sells out of nowhere and then it mysteriously sells again like a few hours later, I know quite a few of you say that happens, that's your listing quality score. Etsy noticed that that listing sold and they wanted to show it to more people to see if they could get it to sell again for you. Um, they're they're experimenting. So um, full, like I said, in the Etsy SE Oodles workshop down there, um, there is my Science of Etsy Success a mini course, which explains how Etsy's algorithm works and all of the factors that contribute to your listings getting found. So, yeah. Oh, this will be the last question because we are over our time here. <clears throat> Do you guys ever get tired of answering the same questions from different people? <laughs> um, I don't. At one point I did. But then after doing this, we're going on year six. I realized that my entire job is repeating the same thing to different people. And those the answers to those questions do kind of sometimes change a little bit. And it keeps us on our toes, for one. And the audience is different people. It's mm -hmm. different people that are coming to ask the same questions because they're getting their upstart. And at the end of the day, what we enjoy is educating people, helping people. And this is what we do for a living. We sell our course twice a year. And for people that are interested in furthering their business beyond just the free content that we offer, this is our way to advertise to those people. And it's also a way for us to connect with an audience that we wouldn't otherwise connect with. Because, I, I mean, it's a li it's an hour and a half live stream every week. This is a lot of work, believe it or not. We can't have any plans on Friday. We have to tell everyone that we know to not call us, like, show this, up. This part of our lives is for you. And that includes the build up to it. We can't have anything stressful for like two hours leading up to it, because if we come on camera and we're stressed out, it reflects directly back onto you guys. If, like, if we're sick, we got to we got to <clears> like <throat> chop, chop, get feeling better, you know, do some flow nays in each nostril. We got to be which ready. I have literally like right over here. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is this is a part of our lives. This is and, a part of our job. And this is like one of the most enjoyable, enjoyable parts of it, because we answer questions, but we also get to goof a little bit. Yeah. And a lot of you Excuse guys, me. Um, I, I mean, for those of you who have been around for a while, you know this, but um, <clears throat> I, I went to school to be a teacher. I went to school to be a preschool teacher, but um, I, I started in early childhood education and I actually go back to my high school and talk to <laughs> the juniors and Excuse seniors um, at my high school and I teach them, um, you know, I've been doing things about readiness and life readiness uh, because it's a vocational school. So basically they are in training to learn how to mm -hmm. take, you know, they've already started their careers as high school students. And one of the, you know, big things that I have learned in doing that is that all of my teachers that I respected so much as a teenager, they are teaching the same exact thing every single year. They can refine their curriculum a little bit, um, and adapt it. But for the most part, the the foundation of what they teach is the exact same thing every single year. And every year they become more polished and they get better at it. And I see it as the same exact thing. While I may be saying the same information at its core, I get better at explaining it. And I get more, um, I, I find better metaphors and mm -hmm. ways to say certain things. And sometimes, you know, new little bits of information yeah. will trickle in and we get to pivot a little bit and, and explain things in different ways. So do I get tired of it? The only thing that I get tired of, and this is me being Starla being totally real, the only thing that I get tired of are the questions of like, I just started on Etsy. How do I make sales? Which how we do understand I be, them. We understand why. How do I be successful? In order for me to compact Everything that I have done in over 10 years of my life learning how to be a good educator and marketer and compress that into a single sentence for you that will, mm -hmm. you know, there's no satisfying answer to the question, how can I be successful? There's none. I have literally thousands and thousands and thousands of hours invested into videos. Yeah. If it were that if it were that easy to answer that question, all of you would be successful from the get-go. Right. I so the only thing that I get <clears throat> tired of is I call them lazy questions, and it's not saying that you're lazy. They're lazy questions because I can only give them lazy answers, mm -hmm. and those answers don't... They're, they're not, lacking perspective. They're not fulfilling. Um, there's nothing that I can say to you in one second. And there's no nice way to say it. That's Most of the time when I answer and I say I'm going to skip questions like this, I get nothing but hate in the comments from new people down below saying like, oh, he's so rude. It's not rude. I'm giving you an honest answer. People don't like honesty, unfortunately. Right. But um, but it's it, we want we want to help you. So the more specific your questions can be. Right. The better we can answer those. 
question. Your phone playing? Yeah, it's your YouTube video. There could be. I was like, where's that sound coming? You from? know, and that's why, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm pushing, I'm pushing all the free stuff down below, and obviously, you know. It, it, that's that's a little extra effort, but you got to consider that a question that I get a lot, you know, if I, if I re repeatedly get the same question, I will invest 20, 30, 40 hours into creating the ultimate item, the ultimate free item that will answer everything about that question. Mm -hmm. That way, when I get it, I can say, hey, I've actually got, you know, everything you need to know to answer that is down below. You know, I made this for you. I put all these hours into it. I made it free and readily available. So it's accessible to everyone. Even if you don't have the money to invest, it's down there. Um, and sometimes rather than me giving you a one-off non-fulfilling answer that isn't going to actually teach you anything, I would rather redirect you to the thing that took me 40 hours to produce um, that will give you the very, very best source of information. Um, you know, because I, I, I do love what I do. I love what I do and I respect the hell out of you guys. And I hope that there, that at least, you know, most of you have some degree of respect for what we do, but we always take a scientific approach to everything, no matter what it is. And science is honest. <laughs> science is honest. It's not always going to be exactly what you guys want to hear. I'm never going to blow smoke up your butts. I'm, I'm always going to give you the scientific answer. And I'm always going to, if I don't know something or if I have to speculate, I'm always going to tell you that I'm just speculating. I would rather, I would rather not answer a question than give you guys bad advice. We are currently hounding Canva right now about something. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. No, I one of their moderators said something really stupid in their Facebook group, and we're doing damage control for them because it will affect the entirety of we, a, 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 an industry. I'll just leave it at that. Right. We are like <clears throat> hardcore interrogating Canva right now based on something that they, we're getting conflicting information from two different staff members. One doesn't actually work for Canva, though. They're just a Facebook moderator. Right. So, anyway. yeah. But, you know, we we pride ourselves on giving you guys that great information. And, you know, obviously most of it, we encourage you to do your own research. Always try to get things from the horse's mouth. I think that, you know, us being managers over at erank.com, we do get a little bit more than the general public does. And there are a lot of Etsy YouTubers out there that just spew absolute BS. Mm -hmm. they, it's like they make things up or they read something in a forum from an unverified source and, and then, then they, they just they preach it as gospel. So yeah. that's why we do always tell you guys to be very, very careful, uh, especially on on YouTube. You, not every YouTuber that has a nice camera and a pretty backdrop and and cool editing skills is right just because they pay an editor right. to make their it's videos. Not that, it's not that hard. Yeah. So <clears throat> always ask for sources. If something seems a little off, ask me for sources. I will either, if I'm speculating, I'll tell you I'm speculating. If I've got a source, I'll give it to you. Um, but and, and do do this actively on other channels as well. Ask, ask for sources. If they can't give you a source, yeah. Anyway, Johnny had said, uh, no, they thought they've they've had that for a long time. And this is how their actual search results have changed from the update. Could you if you have sources for that, could you email those to me, Johnny, if you're still here? Support it. You S support it. You, 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 yes. Support it. Handmade Alpha Academy dot com. <laughs> support it. Handmade Alpha Academy. Just going through Not the last right. little comments because we had replies to a lot of things we had talked about. Mark's the cool dad at the rock concert. I'm really not. I, I like to be left alone at the concert. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. Mashuga, anyone? Absolutely. <clears throat> Lots of Okami. Man, my Okami over there. My whole, like the game Okami. My whole setup over there is Okami. New Metallica album. Yeah, they they peaked it just before Black Album. You're going to lose us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to lose us some subs on that one. The first band I was ever in was a Metallica cover band, so I'm allowed to have that opinion. <laughs> Okay. Do you like Marilyn Manson? I don't like him as a person, but I think he is one of the most influential artists in rock and metal history. And I don't think metal would be the way that it is. I, I am a huge proponent of separating the artist from the art. I think it's absolutely silly to judge art based on something that someone has done, even if it influenced that art. And I think Marilyn Manson has some of the most unique music in rock and roll. And I think Rob Zombie is the same way. I don't particularly care for him as a human because he's a literal psychopath <laughs> um, but because of that he made music that changed rock and metal forever he is one of the reasons that metal made it to the mainstream if it weren't for him doing all the weird stuff he did on tv in the 90s i don't think metal would have been popular <gasps> i can't even remember what's the last metal show we actually went to was it the white chapel show we went to 
I think that's the last metal metal show that we went to. Yeah, because Bayside was the last show we went to. Mm-hmm. Unless you want to count people you played with, but those weren't those metal. weren't those weren't metal. Those O-tap. were rock bands. And then I'm going to see. You played with Otep. I did play with Otep, and that was a nightmare. Oh, <laughs> she's a terrible person. We had just she's had so a, aggressive. We had just had a mass shooting in our hometown. And she came and pointed a plastic gun at the audience. I'm like, oh, sweetheart, no. Don't do that. Everyone backed up and was like, yeah. It didn't look like a fake gun, but it was. Anyway, it's got to be careful with that. But I'm going to see Mastodon and Lorna Shore and Gojira with my band in August. That's going to be pretty cool. Etsy. I think that's it. Oodles. <clears throat> How do I get back to the dashboard page? Uh, Linda, right when you signed up for Etsy Etsy Oodles, it was emailed to you. <laughs> um. So you need to bookmark that, but I would go into your emails and find the the page again. However, if you need to sign up for it again, um, you can. You won't end up on the list double because you'll combine with your. Just make sure you use the same same email address, and it'll like just combine the account into one. Who says? Sleep tokens. I love sleep tokens. Bad omens, Bad omens is probably omens. album of the year 2022 <laughs> underneath Lorna Shore. I think Star- I think Lorna Shore was better to start playing the instruments. Yeah, the dumb ones. <laughs> I, I, was a, uh, I was a trumpet and a baritone player, so um nothing useful for the metal scene, unfortunately. Mr. Moore is uh Oh yeah, I'm all about the metal. However, I also am super into the EDM. Look out for the end of the year. I'm actually planning on releasing an EP at the end of fall. Are you gonna go to Aftershock? We can't because we are nowhere near Aftershock anymore. We are anymore. nowhere near Aftershock anymore. However, we will be at Lost Lands Music Festival in September for any of you bass heads out there. Yeah, we uh, Aftershock, we went the year that Avenged Sevenfold played but about six years ago, and Mark almost got crushed to death. Yep, had a had a larger lady get put, pushed over in a mosh pit, and she tackled my leg and turned it backwards. Fortunately, somehow it didn't dislocate or do anything, but it hurt pretty bad. Yeah. What about was... Tool? We saw them on their comeback tour, and it was one of the coolest shows I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, that's probably going to go ahead and be it. We're, we're goofing. We had kind of a lonely week this week, so... We've been wanting to talk. So we love you guys. We will (laughs) see you guys on Tuesday for her next video next Friday for our next live stream. If you have additional questions, need them answered just a little bit sooner, feel free to check out the E-Rank live streams over on the E-Rank YouTube channel. You can just pop that up in the search bar. Make sure that you subscribe. If you want to see content more often, give us a a thumbs up. It it does kind of help us a little bit. What's your favorite MCR song? Uh, I don't like them. House of Wolves. Not just because of the wolves. <laughs> I I like the I like the 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 swing, you know, to it. I'm mm-hmm. a, I used to love MCR. But All right. we will see you next week. Any okay. Valheim today? Nope, we're busy today. Yeah, we got to prepare for Easter. We're busy. Plan for around May for me to start live streaming on Twitch again. But I think it's primarily going to be my music stuff because I'm really trying to focus more on that than the gaming side of things. But anyway, again. Love you guys, and we will see you next week. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Enjoy your, your Easter peeps. And for the Easter peeps. Oh, Easter I peeps. love peeps. Peeps, peeps and coffee. Mm, peeps peeps are and good. coffee. Peeps, 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 peeps s'mores. Ooh, peeps.